In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use the Move tool in Affinity Designer to create this swirling abstract polygon design. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Affinity Designer works, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'm doing in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. I'll have some information about that linked below if you want to check that out. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is open a new document. I'm going to press Command N on my keyboard and I'm going to size the document at 1280 by 1280 pixels and then I will click the Create button to open the document. I'm going to come up here to the Tool Settings menu and make sure you have Snapping enabled if you don't already. And then I'm going to grab the Rectangle tool and snap to the top left corner and click and drag to create a rectangle that covers the entire canvas. And I'm going to make this rectangle black and I'm going to come over here to the Layers menu and hover my cursor over here on the right-hand side of the label until this lock icon appears, and I'll click on that so that we can lock the canvas. And now we have a dark background to place our design on top of. So I'm going to come over here to my Shapes tool now, and I'm going to hold a click over that, and I want to choose the Polygon tool. And I'm going to zoom in over my canvas a little bit, and I'm going to snap the cursor directly in the center of the page, both vertically and horizontally. You'll see those two guides populate on the page when you have it set. And I'm going to click and drag to draw the shape, and then I'm going to hold Command and Shift, or Control and Shift if you're on Windows, to draw the shape from the center out. And I want to make it really small, about that size right there. And as you can see, the shape has five sides. We want to change that to six, so I'll come up here to the Tool Settings menu, and I'll just manually type in six and press Enter, and now we have a six-sided shape, which is what we're going for. So now let's come over here to the Color tab, let's remove the black fill, and let's click on the Stroke Color and make that white. And that right there is about what we're looking for. I'm going to press Command-1 now to zoom back out to 100%. And with the object selected, I'm going to press the Enter key on my keyboard, or the Return key if you're on Mac, and it should bring up the Move Tool dialog, which is right here. And the settings I'm going to use for this, I want to set the rotation to 110 degrees, and I want, I want to set the scale... No, I'm sorry, I want to set the rotation to 10 degrees, and then I want to set the scale to 110 degrees, or 110 percent. And I want to enable the button that says Duplicate. And if I grab this drop-down menu right here and increase this slider, you can see what happens. It increases the number of copies of the design. Now, if I want to use this as like a background design, I could just bring this all the way up until it goes off of the page. And by the way, if you're not seeing your design being clipped off of the page like it is for mine, you could just use the vertical bar key to toggle that off and on. And if you want to use, if you want to create just like a regular polygon design, you could bring it down about that far and then click OK when you're done. And just like that, we've created this interesting little swirling polygon design using the Move tool in Affinity Designer. So let me grab my selection tool now. I'm going to disable snapping. And if you come over here to the Layers menu, you can see that this consists of a bunch of individual objects. I'm going to unify these all together. So I'm going to click and drag over all of these objects and I'll come up here to the Layers menu, I'll go to Geometry, and I will choose Merge Curves. And that'll give us a single object to work with now. And if you want to increase and decrease the thickness of those lines, you can just come over here to the Stroke tab, and by default, I believe it's 0.5 points, but you can increase or decrease this as needed. So I thought it looked good at 0.5, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And let's say you want to change the color of it. As you can see I did here, I gave this like a pink to yellow gradient. If you want to do something like that, let's first grab the Gradient tool, which is located over here. And then I want to come up here to where it says Context and set that to Stroke. And now I'm going to come over here to my Color tab, and I want to change the color of the Stroke first. I'm going to use the first color, which is a light shade of pink. And then, let me zoom in on this a little bit, and then I will come over here to the Type drop-down, and I will choose Linear. And it should give us two different sides to work with. We have the original color over here on the left and the new color over here on the right. I'm going to click on this color over here on the right to select it, and I will make this yellow. Make sure to make it a light shade of yellow. If it's a full yellow, it doesn't quite look right. It looks better with a very subtle, lighter shade. And I'm going to take this handle and just move this up here. And I'll take this one and move this down here. You can even hold Shift if you want to lock it onto the vertical axis. 
And it may be difficult to see because you can see the blue lines there because the object is selected. If I grab the selection tool and deselect it, you can see what it looks like. I think that right there looks pretty good, but if you want to play around with it some more, you could just click on the object to select it and go back to your gradient tool. And you should have those handles available if you choose the stroke option. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.